How y'all good people doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're tapping in, I'm just glad you're tapping in. So I appreciate that. I need you to do me a big favor though. I need you to hit that like button right now as you tap into the live, as you come into the video, hit that like button. We need to get YouTube to uh, recognize and, 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 and spread this content out to more folks so that we can help more folks get to their financial freedom. The only way we do that is I need you guys to hit that thumbs up for me. So please, please, please hit the thumbs up, hit the thumbs up. If you want up to 12 free stocks, Weeble is going to give you up to 12 free stocks for just open up a new Weeble brokerage account and put any amount of money in that brokerage account, they're gonna give you up to 12 free stocks for just trying out the brokerage app. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Weeble link. Open up your new Weeble brokerage account today. Go get that free stock, go get that free money. I'm gonna send you a free Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app to make your first trade so that you can start building wealth immediately. The only way, guys, you get to freedom is you got to buy assets that increase in value over time and create passive income. One of the ways to do that is through paper assets. But you can't buy paper assets unless you, unless you have a brokerage account. And Weeble is a great self-directed brokerage app that I use every single day to transact my trades. It's easy to use. You can do automatic investing. You can do $5 fractional share trading. They don't charge any commissions. They don't charge any monthly or annual maintenance fees. So if you're interested in that offer, please click on that link down in the description box and open up that Weeble account today. Send me a DM on Instagram when you do. Let me know you've opened the Weeble account. Let me know you funded it. Let me know that you're serious about building wealth. And then I'm going to send you that free tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app to start making investments in paper assets so that you can start building your wealth immediately. The largest wealth transfer in history is here. I can go back to 2008 when we had the last great recession, real estate debacle, and people were losing their life savings. People had mortgaged themselves up to their eyeballs with mortgage debt. People were having to mail back in the keys to new homes that they had bought, new rental properties that they had bought, because they couldn't afford to keep them. You gotta understand guys, that was not that long ago, right? You're talking about less than 15 years ago. And here's the amazing thing. Even though all of those people who lost everything in 2008, these people, a lot of them have recovered. They recovered because from 2008 to 2021 was one of the most productive periods in American history for people to build wealth. And the reason they were able to build wealth so rapidly is because assets were so severely discounted that people could buy them from 2008 all the way up to 2021. And then when we had that 2021 growth, a lot of people made a lot of money. I was one of those people. Now I was not one of those people that lost everything in 2008, but I was one of the people that were buying assets like crazy in 2008, 2009, 2010, all the way up to around 2020, just buying assets like crazy. And then all of a sudden, in 2000, 
20, the pandemic happened. A great pandemic happened. And here in the United States, we shut down everything. And guess what else shut down and started deteriorating in value very quickly? The stock market. In March of 2020, to I believe tail end of April of 2020, the stock market lost about 30 to 35 percent of its value. And if you were smart, you would have recognized that as an opportunity to build wealth. But most of us didn't. Most of us looked at that as an opportunity to lose everything, as opposed to an opportunity to gain everything. Thankfully, I looked at it as an opportunity to gain. And I went ahead and started buying paper assets shortly after that 30 to 35% decline in the stock market when the pandemic broke out. Now in 2021, we had a really, really good year in the stock market, just major. But guess what else happened? In 2022, as the Fed started raising short-term interest rate, guess what happened? It created another opportunity, a major, major opportunity for people to build wealth again. So we had a major opportunity in 2008. A lot of people missed that opportunity, but a lot of people didn't. I was one of the people that didn't miss that opportunity. Then we had another major opportunity in March, between March and April 2020, when the pandemic broke out. Now the pandemic was horrible, and we no, no one wanted the pandemic, but it happened. But it did severely cripple the stock market for a period of time. Like I said, stock market went down 30 to 35%. That was your second opportunity to build wealth. Second opportunity. Some people took advantage of it, a lot of us didn't. And now your third opportunity started in the beginning of 2022 when I was telling you guys in all of my videos, guys, the Fed is gonna be increasing short-term interest rates. That means the stock market is going to start dropping because when the stock market does its best work is when interest rates are low because companies can borrow money and then they can take that money and invest it into their growth. That's how the stock market grows for most companies, right? So in 2022, January, February, when the Fed started increasing short-term interest rates, 25, 50, 75, etc., that created another opportunity for wealth transfer, right? So you had the 2008, I would say 2008 to 2019, tail end of 2019, right? You had that opportunity to transfer wealth. And then you had, right, March through April of 2020. Matter of fact, you had most of 2020 to take advantage of a, of a down stock market. Real estate didn't really crash, but the stock market did. You had a 30 to 35 percent decline in the stock market in those two months alone. It could have even been worse than that, guys, honestly. But my point is that was a second opportunity to transfer wealth. Right. I would say from probably around April of 2020 to around probably November of 2020, you had an opportunity. I made a huge investment in September of 2020. And I held that investment for three years. And I made over a 30% 30 per, 30 return when I recently sold that position. So that was your second opportunity. Now you got a third opportunity, which we're in currently right now. The greatest opportunity, the, 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 the largest wealth transfer, guys, in history is still here. But you do not participate in it unless you're buying paper assets. You do not participate in it unless you are in the process and in, you know, the, the early stages of building a business. Real estate right now is still an opportunity, but you got to do some work because the only opportunity right now in real estate is distressed properties. And you got to roll up your sleeves and get out there and find them. But if you can find them, real estate is, is even a good asset to be able to get right now. If you can find distressed properties because they'll be trading on the market value, right? But my point is, you still got time. 
Because I get emails all the time from subscribers. I get DMs all the time from subscribers and followers on Instagram saying, hey man, did I miss it? Am I too late? Is it, is it still an opportunity to be buying paper assets to build wealth? The stock market seems like it's doing okay. Is it the right time to get in? And I keep telling people, if you go back to December 2021, the stock market was, look at the S&P. Let's just look at the S&P 500 back in December of 2021. It was trading at 4,700 points range, right? Now, we've, we've, we've bounced a, a couple of times over the last year and a half, almost 20 months. We've bounced a couple of times and hit 4,500 points in the, in the S&P, but we haven't gotten even close to where it's going to end up, guys, in my opinion. I still think once the Fed starts reducing short-term interest rates in the middle of 2024, like the Fed chair has already went on record saying that's when they're going to hopefully start doing it if inflation behaves, when they start decreasing those short-term interest rates in June of next year, that is going to trigger the stock market to start going back up. Why? Because interest rates are going to start coming down. Companies in the broader stock market are going to be able to start borrowing money cheaply again. More investment is going to be coming into those companies. So they're going to have the ability to start growing again. And when the Fed really, really, really turns on that interest rate lever, when they start really pulling it back and pressing down those interest rates, that's when we're going to see the stock market go into a bull market. It's going to leave the bear market that we're currently in and go into another bull market. And when that happens, guys, all of these assets that I'm asking you guys to consider buying are going to go up in value. They're going to increase in value. Every bear market is followed by a bull market. Go check the history of the stock market, guys. I'm just not telling you this to be telling you this. Every bear market is followed by a bull market. You still are in a prime opportunity to transfer wealth right now. But you have to get your wealth game plan, your, your building wealth game plan together and start executing. What most of us are doing is sitting back and waiting on mainstream media to tell us when it's time to buy which is totally backwards, right? We shouldn't be sitting around waiting for somebody on television to say, well, okay, guys, now is the perfect opportunity to start buying paper assets. No, because that's when it's probably the wrong time to be buying. See, the 1% want you to buy when you really should be selling, and they want you to sell when you really should be buying. See, right now, in my opinion, is the, the best opportunity because you're still gonna be able to get these companies and these ETFs and these index funds while they're still trading at a discount. I'm telling you, by the time June of 2024 rolls around, they're gonna start going back up in value. And that's where you wanna be capturing, you wanna be moving up with the market. You wanna be dollar cost averaging in and moving up. And over the next 10 years, if you got some patience, if you start buying now and you consistently buy over the next 10 years, I think that's where you will transfer a lot of wealth to yourself. Now, how much wealth you transfer to yourself is going to depend on what? How much money you put into your investments. That, that's going to determine it. If I only got $500 a month to put in, right, and I do that every month over the next 10 years, I'm still going to have a nice nest egg. But it's not going to be as large as a nest egg for someone who puts $1,000 in a month or $2,000 in a month or $3,000 in a month. If you took $1,000 a month and put it in like an S&P 500 ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index and you got an 8% return over the next 10 years, an average return of 8% over the next 10 years, you're going to have between one hundred and seventy-five dollars to $200,000 in that account. Now, now, who out there couldn't use an extra one seventy-five dollars to $200,000 in their nest egg fund over the next 10 years? Who couldn't use that? 
all of us could. But that's the power of dollar cost averaging in to an investment that has a proven track record of success like the S&P 500 index. It has a proven track record over the last 90 years, seven to, eight, seven to 10 percent rate of return. So something like that, if we can get comfortable enough to open our brokerage account, which is linked down in the description box for the Weeble self-directed brokerage app that I use. If we open that brokerage account, commit to putting in at least $1,000 a month in an S&P 500 ETF, like the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, VOO. Again, guys, not your financial advisor, just giving you some history of what I've done in order to build my wealth. My journey is gonna be different than your journey. So please, go out and do you some homework, go out and do your research, make sure it's right for you before you invest in anything. But I'm giving you what has been successful for me, and that's what I do on this channel. I give you my experiences in building wealth in hopes that it will help you grab a nugget or two so you can go out and start building your wealth. That's the reason I'm giving you this call to action today, is to warn you, you're going to miss this transfer opportunity of wealth if you continue to sit on the sideline and don't put yourself in the game. You're going to miss it. And I know what's going to happen. I'm going to get emails. I'm going to get DMs and say, what happened? I was waiting. I, uh, how did I miss it? Well, you missed it because you shouldn't be waiting. You should be in the game. You should be figuring out what investments make sense for you and your financial plan and then start getting yourself in the game of buying assets while they're still discounted. And then just continue buying them for the next 10 years through dollar cost averaging. That's the way you build wealth, right? And like I told you, the amount of wealth you build is gonna be different for, for everybody. You know, a person that puts in $100 a month in an ETF like the S&P 500 is gonna have different results than someone who puts in $1,000 a month. The key to building wealth is all about your income and how much of that income you are willing to put in to an asset to grow it. That's the key to building wealth, guys. You don't have to be some Harvard-educated individual to build wealth. You don't have to have a degree. You don't even have to have a high school diploma. You don't even have to have a high-paying job. What you do have to have is discipline, consistency, and patience. Those three things you do have to have. But if you have them or you're willing to develop them, then you can start building wealth right now. But you got to take yourself off the sideline and put yourself in the financial game to do that. Again, guys, I'm just here as a messenger. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. I'm, I don't have any of those designations. I don't have a Series 7 license. I don't, I don't have a 63. I don't have a 6. I don't have a CFP. I don't have none of that stuff. But even though I don't have any of that stuff, guess what I did over the last 20 to 25 years? Built my wealth anyways, doing exactly what I'm telling you to consider. Again, my results may not reflect your results. But I tell you one thing, if you don't try something or do something, I guarantee you where you are today financially in 10 years, you'll be in the same spot. You're going to be in the same spot. I've already told y'all the definition of insanity. Doing the same old thing over and over, but expecting a different result. The only way you get a different result is you got to change up what you're doing. You got you to pivot. You got to try a new strategy. Sitting around and hoping it happens for you ain't going to get it done. You got to take action. Sitting around trying to learn everything you need to learn because you're afraid. That's what most people do. They sit around and, 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 and blame their lack of knowledge for why they're not building well. Oh, I don't know enough. What do you need to know? I mean, what do you need to know? I mean, come on. You don't need to know that much. You need to know exactly what I've given you, and then you can go out and back that up with your own research. If you, don't, if you don't believe what I'm telling you about the S&P 500 index, all you got to do is go to Google. 
and type in average rate of return over the last 90 years for the S&P 500 index. And poof, it'll come up. Read it for yourself. I'm not, I'm, I'm, again, guys, I can't predict that'll happen over the next 90 years. But what I can tell you is based on history, there's a chance it could happen again based on what history tells us, right? And that's all we can do. Anytime we invest in anything, guys, you know, we, we take a chance of losing the money that we put into it. For 25 years when I was buying real estate, every piece of real estate I bought, there was an opportunity or a chance I could lose money on it. But I did it anyways because the alternative was doing nothing and I had no opportunity to make money if I did nothing. But at least doing something, even though it could present some risk of losing my money, it was still an opportunity for me to make money. And that's why I keep telling you guys, there is no absolute. If you want to build wealth, build it. If you don't, stay put where you're at, and I guarantee you, in 10 years, you'll be in the same position. So it's your choice. You do whatever you feel like you need to do, but I'm just telling you what's happening right now is the largest wealth transfer in history. Right? We've had a couple opportunities, a lot of us, in our, in our, in our adult life, we've had some opportunities. Like I said, we had the 2008 opportunity. Some of you took advantage of it, a lot of you didn't. A lot of you just ran and hid behind the bed, scared, because what you were hearing on TV. Oh, we'll never recover. This is the worst thing that ever happened to the U.S. economy. It will never recover. And guess what? 10, 12 years later, guess what it did? All-time highs. <laughs> this is what I keep telling y'all. This is the propaganda that the 1% put out there to keep you scared and afraid so that you can continue to earn your income and then spend your income on crap that is not going to get you to financial freedom. They want you to spend your money on crap that's going to continue to make them wealthy. I'm going to tell you that every single day. So if you tap in and you tune into my channel every single day, that's what you're going to hear. Until you understand what's at risk here. And what's at risk right now is you working for somebody for the rest of your life. That's what's at risk, guys. And again, I'm not telling you what to do with your money. If you, 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 if you don't want to do anything with your money, don't do it. Keep it where it's at. Keep spending it to make somebody else wealthy. But I promise you, at some point, you're going to wake up. You're going to be my age. And you're going to look at your savings account. You're going to look at your retirement accounts. You're going to look at your credit card balances. And you're going to say, dang. Dang. Where did time go? I thought I had more time. Dang, I'm 55, I'm tired, my bones aching. I ain't quick as I used to be. I'm feeling a little, you know, I'm feeling a little under the weather. Wouldn't it be nice to have a nice nest egg that you build over these next 10 years so that you got some choices, some freedom, and some time in your life. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? But one thing is not gonna happen. You ain't gonna get any of those three things unless you take action. You need to take action now. And again, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to give you my experience. Some of you that watch my channel are older than me. But many of you that watch my channel are younger than me, and the reason I know that is because I look at the analytics of my channel, and I know exactly what the age groups are who watch. And that 25 to 44 is my largest age group, 25 to 44. And guess what? I'm older than that. So a lot of you people who are watching me are younger than me, and I'm telling you what's in store for you. I'm telling you what's in store for you. Your financial life is not going to get better unless you do something now. Not two years from now, not three years from now, not four years from now, now. Again, you don't have to be afraid. What you do have to do is have something that's important to you that you would like to have accomplished over the next 10 years to help guide you into and give you motivation and encourage you to go out 
and do something I know you're probably not comfortable doing, which is taking your money and investing it in something that you really don't have a huge understanding for. But guess what? When I was 26 years old, I had zero understanding as well, but I did it anyways. And thank God I did. Because now I get to control my own time. I also control my own financial destiny. It's really nice to know that I get to do the things that I want to do that matter to me in this life. And I don't have to worry about how I'm going to pay for it. That's nice. Guys, I'm no smarter than you. I'm just a guy who took action. I'm just a guy who said, you know, even though I don't know a whole bunch about real estate investing, I'm going to do it anyways. Even though I don't know a whole lot about the stock market, I'm going to take a small amount of money to start with and I'm going I'm to put, put my big toe in the pond. I'm, I, I can't swim, but I guess what? I, I'm going to get up to my waist in the water anyways and stand up in it so I can get more comfortable with it. Right? I'm afraid of heights, but guess what? I'm going to go on that Ferris wheel anyways. I'm just going to close one eye, keep one eye open, close one eye. I'm scared, but guess what? I'm going anyways. My point is we will never overcome our fears in this life unless we just go ahead and tackle them head on and do it anyways. That's how you overcome the fears in your life, man. You can't hide behind stuff and make excuses. Well, you're going to be afraid for the rest of your life? I mean, come on, guys. This, what we're talking about is your freedom, your financial freedom. Whoever pays you controls your financial freedom right now. Whoever pays you controls your time. Whoever pays you controls your financial destiny. You never take those things back and own them yourself unless you build assets that generate passive income and you can fire that nine to five job or you can fire whoever's paying you. And then you get to go out and do the things that you really want to do and enjoy the life that God meant for you to be enjoying right now. But you'll never get there unless you take some initiative. You got to take initiative. I'm not telling you not to go out and do your homework and research what I'm what I'm asking you to consider. Yes, go out and research it. Go out and look up the S&P 500 index and look at the average rate of return over the last 90 years, the last 30 years, the last 50 years. Right. Go look at that. Go do your research if you want to on Weeble. Right. I don't care if you open Weeble or not, guys. I recommend Weeble because that's what I use. And that's the free tutorial video that I've done to give people to show them how to do it. It doesn't matter what brokerage account you open. Brokerage accounts that are registered here in the United States are all monitored by the Securities and Exchange. Right. Commission. They all are. They're monitored. They have to meet certain guidelines. They can't just pop, pop, pop up shop here in the U.S. and say, well, OK, I'm a U.S. brokerage. Come on, send me your money and then just run off with people. That ain't how it work, guys. That ain't that. That's any brokerage firm, any investment firm doing business in the United States has to go through that rigorous process of being approved and being monitored by the SEC. But I don't care if you don't open Weeble, don't open it, but open something. You better open something. You better figure out how to get a brokerage account open so that you can start buying assets, paper assets. And if you decide you don't want to go with paper assets, buy something else. Whatever you want to buy, buy it. But you better find assets. I don't care what assets they are. You better find assets that increase in value over time and create passive income for you. That's the only thing going to save you financially when you get to my age. That's the only thing going to save you. Nobody else ain't going to save you. Nobody. Government ain't going to save you. Nobody going to save you. Nothing. No, no rich celebrity going to save you, right? Nobody going to save you but you. You got to save you. That's one thing we got to stop doing so much of is, is in this country is looking for somebody to save us, looking for somebody to give us something. Ain't nobody going to give you nothing. I keep telling you that. And I'm going to keep telling you that every day on every video, every live stream. No one's going to give you nothing until you understand that. And, 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 and don't, don't look at that as a negative you look at that as a positive 
That just means, okay, I know now no one's going to help me. No one's going to rescue me. No one's going to save me. Now what I got to do is just get out here on my own and do it myself. And then lean on people like Richard Fain for, 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 for information. Because that's all it is. It's just information, guys. What you do with that information is up to you. I can't force you to do anything, nor do I want to force you to do anything. No one forced me. I went out and, and, and listened to guys like Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, read the book. Now, I don't follow everything Robert Kiyosaki says and does. I think nowadays he's a little, a little more brimstone, and I ain't in all of that. But one thing I did get from him, one nugget I did get from him was how to leverage real estate, how to buy real estate, put a tenant in it, and then take the equity from that real estate as the property increased in value and buy another one. See, I learned that one little thing from him. And that little piece of information started my real estate investing portfolio. Just that one little nugget that I got from him. Not all the rest of the stuff he talked about, I just ignored it. I just focused on five to one leverage. How do I do that five to one leverage technique he talked about in the book? That's all I, that's all I focused on with real estate. I learned it, did my first property, and then it was poof. I knew it from there on out, right? 401k at the job that I was working for at, two, at 30 years old. People in my office were starting to invest in this 401k thing. I ain't know nothing about no stock market. I, I promise you. I was 30 years old in banking. And honestly, guys, I didn't know anything about the stock market. Didn't know how it worked. Didn't even know it existed. And then some of my colleagues say, hey, man, are you, you, you participate. I'm like, participating in what? The 401k. I'm like, what's that? They said, well, that's the stock market. That's where you put money in, company matches it, and it's for your retirement. So when you get older, you got a nest egg. And I was like, shoot, man, I ain't know nothing about that. Let me start digging into that. And to start taking $150 every two weeks when I got paid, put it in that little company-sponsored 401k. And that's how I started buying paper assets. And then over the years, knowledge became something that I just kept picking up. Still, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not an expert. I'm not even close to being that. I don't know any of the stuff that a lot of these people got all these degrees and all these letters behind their names and all these numbers behind their names. I don't know half of the stuff, book knowledge, they know. One thing I got that a lot of people don't got is I just take action. I just take action. Because, see, I look at what's the worst thing could happen to me if I don't take action. See, the worst thing happens to me if I don't take action is I, I, I'm 60 years old and something happened to me from a medical standpoint or something happens to me that I, that I, that I get an injury or, or I get fired and, and, and I got no savings, I got no retirement, I got no nest egg, and then all of a sudden, I'm stuck like Chuck. See, that's the worst thing I think about. And I said to myself, no, I'm not gonna be stuck like Chuck. Uh-uh, I'm gonna build me some wealth. It may take me 20 years to do it, which it did, but I was okay with that. See, that's, that's, that's that patience again. That's the patience you got to develop. You got to develop consistency and discipline as well. But if you can do those three financial behaviors and you can take a small amount of money every single month for the next 10 years, there's a chance you can build some wealth for yourself and, and get your nest egg. And that's the goal you should be looking to do. Your goal shouldn't be buying a new car anytime soon. Shouldn't be buying new cars right now. Mm-mm. Especially if you, if you can't pay cash for it. Have you seen interest rates lately on new cars? Have you seen interest rates on used cars? They're pretty high. And, 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 for, and, and why would you buy a new car anyways? When, when as soon as you drive it off the lot, it's going to depreciate by 20%. As soon as they hand you the keys, as soon as you drive off the lot, poof, 20% of the value is gone. Even if you try to bring it back to them the next day, it's gone, 20% gone. So why would I put my money in that? Why would I pay $740 a month, which is the average new car monthly payment? That's the monthly payment on, a, on, a, on, on average across the United States for a new car is in the 740 range. Why would I spend $740-ish per month on a new car when I got no rainy day fund, where I got credit card debt? at 25% interest rate. 
I got no retirement savings. Why would I do that? Well, why I wouldn't do that if I'm thinking correctly, but most of us thinking a short term. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this because I deserve it. I've worked hard. Everybody else I know got new cars. Every time I go to the family uh, the, uh, Sunday dinner, everybody got new cars and I'm coming up in my old 10 year old car. I'm tired of that. I gotta go get me a new one. I gotta be like everybody else. I gotta be broke and poor like everybody else, but I'm gonna have a new car. I don't know how I'm gonna pay for it because I got you know, $10,000 worth of credit card debt that I can't pay off. I got student loans that's getting ready to turn back on in October of this year. Right, right, the government ain't giving me no more furloughs on that. They're going to turn back on the interest rate in, in, in October. So for those of y'all out there that got student loan debt, get ready. It's coming. I'm trying to tell you guys th this financial thing is real. You better start paying attention. You better start paying attention. I mean, you guys know I told y'all I ain't even buying no more supercars. Not anymore. I'm done. I had my share. I'm done. I'm doubling down on, on, on assets that are going to appreciate in value. I'm done with buying depreciating assets. Even though I can afford to do that, I ain't doing it no more. Now, if a guy that can afford to buy depreciating assets ain't doing it no more, what what, what that tell you you should be thinking about? Not doing it either, especially if you're not in a situation where you're financially secure and you're at your freedom. Every dollar you spend uh, buying stuff you don't need is one less dollar you could be putting in assets to build wealth for yourself to get the freedom at some point. But see, most of us, we, we just, we miss that. We miss it. We miss it. But we got to wake up. We got to wake up and, 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 and smell the coffee before we can't smell it no more. We better wake up and smell the coffee before it's too late and we can't smell it no more. Because we ain't getting no younger. We're getting older. And again, no one's going to save us. No one's going to rescue you. Nobody going to come up to you one day and say, you know something, Richard? Um, I know you just, you squandered your money. You made decent money, but you spent it all making someone else wealthy. But, but, but I forgive you. Here's an envelope. There's a million dollars in that envelope. Go enjoy your golden years. Guys, ain't nobody going to do that for you. Mm-mm. Nope. In your golden years, you're going to be working. Or you're going to be living not the lifestyle you want to live. Unless you do something right now to solidify and guarantee the lifestyle that you want. Now, y'all don't got to believe me. But I'm telling you guys, I'm 55 years old, man. I ain't the oldest cat out here. But I'm a cat with some experience on this belt. I'm a cat with some experience on this belt, and I'm telling you, it's real out here. I was in the banking industry for 25 years, working with high net worth individuals. And let me tell you something, man. The people who I respected the most out of all my clients were the people who was so wealthy, but you didn't even know it. I mean, they had so much wealth that I didn't even, I, I, I was surprised at how they lived their lifestyle. See, for them, it wasn't about things. Although they could afford things. That wasn't what it was about for them. For them, it was about lifestyle. You know, for them, it was about helping people. For them, it was about breathing in this fresh air. For them, it was about, you know, helping the planet. It ain't about things. It's just not. Now, don't get me wrong, they got things because they can afford it, but it wasn't, that, 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 that they, they built the wealth, so, so not for the things. They built the wealth for the lifestyle, the freedom, the choices, the time. That's why they built the wealth. They didn't build the wealth to have a big boat. They didn't build the wealth to have a big house. They didn't build their wealth to have a fleet of exotic cars, even though some of them had all those things. When I really talked to them and asked them, why did they do it? Why did you go through all this financial hell when you didn't have to? They say, well, I, I, I want to be able to get up in the morning. I want to walk out on my patio and I want to have a cup of coffee. 
I want to look at my beautiful scenery and I just want to rejoice in being able to do whatever I want to do. And, and also some of the other things I want to do are A, B, C, D, E, F, G on my bucket list. But really the main thing is, is I want to control 100% of my time. I want to control my own financial destiny. That's what the majority of these self-made people that I work with over 25 years, some were just multi, 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 multi millionaires. Some of these people had a couple hundred, thousand, couple hundred million dollars in real estate properties. Wealthy individuals. But yet and still, I had one client. <laughs> this, this gentleman had a lot of money, man. This guy had like a, like a Solaris, a Solaris, uh, uh, one of them Toyota Solarises. I think that's the name of it. But it was like a, I don't know, early 2000 car or something. It was just not even, it was like, but that guy drove that car every day. Every time I went out to see him at one of his big old gigantic shopping center properties, that's what he pulled up in. Every time I went down to Naples, Florida, meet him for lunch in one of his country clubs he belonged to, that's what he pulled up in. No fancy Rolex on. No, 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 no drip. Just a plain guy. But worth a couple hundred mil. <laughs> I was like, dang. And guess what? When I heard his story, no different than mine. Started out in banking, entry level like me, and then started working with real estate clients and then decided, you know something, if these folks can buy real estate for income, I can too. And then he just started building his empire, one property at a time, stretched over three states, Illinois, um, Indiana, Florida. And he had big boy properties because all of his Florida properties, well, a good piece of his Florida properties, we financed for him. One of my best clients, down to earth guy, mild guy, but a tiger when it comes to real estate investing. Those are the kind of clients. And then I had some clients who were just flamboyant. They did have the Rolex, they did have the big yachts, they did have all this other stuff, but they were still wealthy. So it doesn't matter, it's just whatever is important to you. The key though, the key ingredient for all of those people is they had the wealth. They built the wealth first. And then the wealth provided whatever lifestyle they wanted. That's the key. They didn't spend the early years or their middle years building and making income to, to, to make someone else wealthy. They delayed gratification to, they were to, a, to, to where they were at a point where they could do whatever they wanted to do. And that's the key. That's the key. This right now is the largest wealth transfer in history. It's here right now, guys. And I know some people, oh, it's not the wealth transfer. It's going to be a crash in six months. I guarantee you the whole world's going to end. People say that all the time, man. People said that in 2008. <laughs> said the same thing. They said the same thing when the, when the crash happened once the pandemic started. When the pandemic started in, 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 in March and April of 2020, everything collapsed. People said the same thing. People will always say that, guys. You're going to always have pessimists out there question is, are you going to join in and be a pessimist and hide your money on your mattress at home uh, and just be f uh, afraid? Are you going to earn your money and go out and spend things on instant gratification and make somebody else wealthy? That's up to you. That's your decision. You got to make that choice. I, I, I always people always throwing up an excuse about, oh, the dollar is going to zero. Listen, guys, I don't have no crystal ball. I don't know if the dollar going to zero or not. Honestly, I don't, I, I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is how am I going to be in a position to take care of myself when I'm no longer able to trade time for money? That's all I care about. I'm not going to worry about the U.S. dollar. I'm not going to worry about other countries banding together and, oh, dude, Russia, China, all these people getting together. They're going to not use the dollar anymore. That's going to crush us. Listen, man, I worry about things that I can control. I don't worry about things I can't control. Only thing I control is, is going to, making this money and putting it in an asset to double it, triple it, quadruple it to get to my financial freedom. That's the only thing I can control. I can't control what goes on in Russia. I can't control what goes on in, in, in India. I can't control what goes on with uh, the, the U.S. dollar. I, I can't control any of that crap, so why am I worried about it? 
See, that's the problem with us. We want to spend too much time worrying about crap we got no control over. That's all we want to do. Well, what about bricks? I don't even know what bricks is and don't care. Why? Because I, I don't control it. Why am I thinking about something I can't control? When I should be thinking about things I can control. Right? Worry about what you can control. Don't worry about something that you have no impact on. You have no ability to control. Your little two cents, nobody wants to hear it. Right? Control the things you can control in your life. Stop trying to control the rest of the world's life. Right? Oh, our economy is weak. And I guarantee you, whoever wrote that comment, dead broke. Ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. Dead broke. But that's how we do, though. We dead broke, no wealth, ain't never built no wealth, ain't going to build no wealth, but we want to comment on the U.S. economy like we really know what's going on with the U.S. economy. <laughs> I tell you, man, boy, y'all better wake up, man. Some of y'all are just out there, man, in a whole nother, a whole nother uh, galaxy. Far, far, far away in your mind. You're in a whole nother galaxy. You ain't even in... You ain't even on the... You, you, mentally, you ain't even here on the planet right now. Because we worrying about things that we shouldn't be worried about. I keep telling you, worry about building your wealth and getting to your freedom. Because that's the only thing you can control. Right? That's all you can control. Right? I don't answer no questions where people asking me about crap that I can't control. I don't answer those questions. I don't even respond to them. It's a waste of my time. I don't even waste the mental space. I don't even recognize it. I just delete it and keep moving. I only want to talk to people about things they can control, which is building wealth. I don't care about what no other country is doing. I don't care about what's going on with something that I can't control. And you shouldn't either. You should worry about things that are in your control. Like paying off your high interest rate credit card debt. Like stop buying things to make other people wealthy. Like get your three to six month emergency fund just in case you hit a financial bump in the road. Like live on less than what you make. Like Invest to build wealth so you can control your time and your, and, and, and your destiny, your financial destiny. See, those are things we can control. But we don't want to worry about those things. Mm -mm. We want to worry about what's going on in Russia. We want to worry about what's going on in China. We want to worry about what's going on in the UK and in Europe. We want to worry about what some politician said. We want to argue about... Um, you know, all the stuff we argue about in this country that don't have, that we don't have any control over. And, and all that is, is the 1% distracting you. Keeping you right where they want to keep you. Broke and poor. And, and, and not realizing real freedom comes with owning assets that generate passive income. That's real freedom. They don't want you to know that. And you guys, a lot of you guys give them all the ammunition they need. Just sit up here and worry about crap that, <laughs> that you ain't got no way of having any impact on. But yet and still, that's the question you want to ask. Instead of asking, hey, man, I got $1,000 a month, and, you know, I'm chopping down my debt, and I'd like to know how to invest that $1,000 a month so that I can, at some point in the future, own my own time and, my own, and control my own financial debt. See, that's what we should be asking. But yet and still, we want to ask dumb questions about bricks. We want to ask questions about, uh, what do you think about the, the dollar weakening? What? Dude, come on, man. Come on, man. Find something that you can control and then control that. Don't worry about the dollar. Don't worry about bricks. Right? Don't worry about uh, some oil pipeline in, in Alaska. Okay? You can't control that. You got no, no way of doing anything to control that. So stop worrying about that. Worry about your financial freedom. Worry about your emergency fund. Worry about your high interest rate credit card debt. Worry about how you're going to pay your student loan when they turn back on the interest rate in October of this year. Worry about that. 
right? Worry about these high interest rates on this new car you just bought with a payment you can't afford to make. Worry about that. See, those were decisions you made. Not Russia, not China, not India, not BRICS, not the weakening U.S. dollar. No, you made them choices. See, that's what you need to be worried about. But yet and still, you want to deflect from your real problems and worry about some problems that you can't even help solve. <laughs> solve your problems. Solve your problems. Stop trying to solve the world's problems. Solve your problem. If we did most problem solving of our own crap, we'd be much better off. But no, nope. mm -mm. nope, 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 mm -mm. nope, nope. I'm gonna go out and buy me an iPhone 15 titanium because that's, that's what everybody else doing. I'm gonna go get me one. What's wrong with the phone you got now? Oh no, I got to have the titanium 15 because uh, the camera's better. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> the camera's better. I'm like, come on, man. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? But that's the propaganda. That's how the 1% manipulate us. Apple is the most valuable company in the world. And every six months, they come out with a, a new iPhone. And guess what we do? We go buy it. Like something different from the old one we got. Okay, the 14, it just came out with six months ago. Well, what's different from the 14 and the 15? And I'm sure a lot of you, I'm, I'm sure a lot of y'all that are already bought it going to chime in right here in the chat. Oh, oh, it has 10 more gigabytes. Uh, man, listen, guys. All joking aside, you got to stop this. You got to stop this. We got to stop this. We got to stop this. We got to start worrying about things that really mean something. Stop making Apple rich. You don't probably don't even own Apple stock. Ryan here buying all Apple products, but don't own one piece of the stock. Hell, if you're going to make Apple rich, you might as well buy the stock so that you can get rich too. If you're going to make a bridge, if you're going to continue to buy these iPhones every time one come out uh, every six months, Go get you some Apple stock. At least you're making the whole, at least you're getting, you're getting something else out of it other than spending money on a depreciating asset. You do understand every time you buy the new one, the old one that you bought is obsolete. Well, not obsolete, but you know what I mean. It's worth less. Yeah. So if I've been $1,000 on one and I take it back into Apple six months later, I'm going to trade it in. They may give me $500 for it. Guys, that's a 50% loss in value in six months why do we keep doing this but yet and still we won't own an apple stock. oh no i'm not buying apple stock now i, I don't know I, I heard somewhere that apple is uh uh, uh china is not going to let apple produce any more uh, manufacture any more products in china i can't i can't invest in their stock but yet and still i go buy their 1500 dollars phone though <laughs> but 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 no china Ch china says they're not going to let Apple manufacture in China anymore. So that's going to run up their cost. Their stock is not a good, I, I'm not going to buy the stock, but I will go out and buy the $1,500 iPhone. I'll go do that though. I'm not going to buy the stock so I can be a part of the wealthy, the most wealthiest company in the world. I'm not going to buy their stock because someone said China is going to make it harder for them to manufacture widgets in China. Okay. Okay, but we'll go buy the iPhone though. Apple don't care. Apple do not care if you buy any of their stock or not because they know you're going to buy the iPhone. That's the trap. That's the programming that you've been programmed all your life since birth. Your programming right now is to go out and spend every dime you make making somebody else wealthy. And that somebody is the 1%. That's how you're programmed. But a lot of us want to, want to maintain that program because we think, it's, we think it's the American way. No, you got to reprogram yourself and take that money and put it in assets that build wealth. Right? That's what you got to do. You got to reprogram yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to work for somebody for the rest of your life. You're never going to get to your financial freedom. 
you're never going to be able to enjoy the things that you really want to do and enjoy because you don't have any money to pay for it. You're going to be 70 years old working. Now, I'm not knocking people who are 70 and working. If that's what they want to do, more power to you. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. I ain't doing it. I guarantee you, if you walk into Publix and you see somebody in there, or you walk into some other retail store, or wherever you walk into, and they're 70 years old still working, I would say probably two out of 10 people will say I'm doing it because I, I love it. And I just, hey, I'm independently wealthy, but I'm working at 70 because I love it. I'm working for someone else because I love it. Normally, people working for somebody else at that age, they're doing it because they have to. Because financially, they, they, they have no other choice. They don't have assets sufficient enough to take care of their lifestyle and pay for their lifestyle. So they got to supplement and go work. And again, I'm not bashing that or saying that's a negative. I'm just saying, given the choice, my opinion is most people would want to kick back and do the things that they really want to do and not work. Given the choice, I think that's, that's probably accurate. So it's up to you is what I'm saying. You make the decision. You figure out what's important to you. You figure out if um, working for somebody the rest of your life is something that you um, want to do. And if it is, more power to you, brother or sister. Go ahead. But guess what? They will work you till you ain't here no more. Yeah. And guess what? Ain't nothing getting cheaper. Housing ain't going to get any cheaper. Mm-mm. No. Cost of living going to go up every year. Right? So I'm telling you, the only way you stay ahead of that is you got to have assets that make more than the cost of living increase, right? Inflation is going to be at least 2% every year, right? So you got to be able to make enough money, uh, well, at least get a, a raise sufficient enough that outpaces inflation. Now, right now, inflation is 4.3%. That's core inflation. Headline inflation is 3.7%. How many of y'all got raises this year? that exceed 4.3%. Not a lot of you. I guarantee you a lot of you have not gotten raises this year that exceed 4.3% raise based on the, you probably haven't. So guess what that means? Inflation is going up faster than your pay raise. Now for me, I made some investments in 2020 that paid me a 30% return on my money. Now, I don't tell you that because I did anything special or I'm some smart guy. I just got in the market when I thought it was appropriate. See, when assets are cheap, guys, that's a good time to buy them if you're a long-term guy. And that little piece of information I know, when assets are cheap, when they're discounted, especially if they're good assets that you believe will go back up in value at some point in the future, it's probably a good time to buy them when they're discounted. I don't know. That's a strategy that might work for you. It may not work for you, but it has worked for me over the last 20 to 25 years. So I'm going to get ready to sign off this thing, man. I done been on here long enough. I hope you guys are getting yourself prepared for next week. Right. Getting yourself in a, a in a financial mind frame to get out there and and tackle next week. Right. Tackle next week. I hope you are. I hope you're going to do something to better your financial position. I hope you're not going to spend the majority of your time worrying about problems that the world have that you can't solve. That you can't control. Don't spend all your time in other folks' business. Spend time in your own business. Figuring out a way to get yourself to freedom. That's what you need to spend your time doing this week coming. Don't be in everybody else's business. Don't be on social media uh, in, in people's business. Please don't. Spend your time wisely. Worry about reprogramming the way you think about money. Worry about how you're going to get out of this credit card debt and then not only just worry about it, but put a plan in place to get yourself out of this credit card debt. 
put a plan in place to build you a three to six month emergency fund. Put a plan in place to start taking a certain amount of money and investing it in an asset that will increase in value over time and create a nest egg for yourself. Those are the things you should be concentrating on this week from a financial standpoint. Don't be concentrating on bricks. Don't be concentrating on the dollar weakening. Don't be concentrating on Russia and China and, 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 and Egypt and, and all these other countries that don't care nothing about you, don't even know you exist, but yet and still you in here talking about them. They don't even know you exist. Stop worrying about them. Worry about you. Worry about your family. Worry about securing your financial future. Worry about building a nest egg for yourself. Stop worrying about the world's problems. The world's fine. Trust me. They gonna, they gonna, the world's going to go on. You ain't got to worry about the world. They good. You the one need to be worried about you. Get yourself together. Get yourself financially self. Stop uh, reprogram yourself. Because right now you're really programmed to make somebody else wealthy. Unprogram yourself to not make other people wealthy. That's a good start. Reprogram it. Reprogram. I got reprogrammed 20, 25 years ago when I bought my first piece of real estate. I bought my first piece of real estate when I was 26 years old. 25 years ago. And that started the reprogramming for me. I invested in the stock market for the first time when I was 30 years old. I continued reprogramming myself. I started building side hustles when I was about 35 years old. Continued reprogramming myself. I'm 55 and I'm still reprogramming myself. You never stop reprogramming yourself, guys. If you didn't, if you didn't catch what I was just trying to, I was trying to walk you down that path, you never reprogram yourself. All you can do is continue to work on reprogramming yourself. 55 and I'm still reprogramming myself. But you know something? I'm so glad I did start that process of reprogramming myself. I'm, I'm so happy I did that. Because now I get to do the things I want to do. I'm getting ready to go next week. I'm getting ready to go see Coach Prime in Boulder, Colorado. Going to see the USC game. Spend a few days with him. Kick back, relax. Enjoy myself in Boulder. Enjoy my time with him. And I don't get to do those kind of things, guys, unless I would have built wealth. Because that, chip, that trip is not cheap. Coach Prime don't pay for me coming out there. I pay my own way, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So I don't use my friendships like that to, to get freebies. So I don't need freebies. I don't need nobody to pay for my flight. I don't need nobody to pay for my hotel. I don't need nobody to pay for my rental car. I don't need nobody to do nothing for me. Why? Because I'm financially in a position to do it for myself. Why? Because I built wealth. I built assets. So I get to go hang out with my buddy. I ain't got to worry about it in the back of my mind. Oh, golly, that's a two grand trip for a couple days. So I ain't got to worry about that. I just spend the two grand and go about my business. But the only way I get to do that is because I built wealth. I reprogram myself. I'm still reprogramming myself. And I get to go out there with him and do what? Learn. Not only just enjoy his time, but learn. Learn from somebody that has more wealth than I have. I get to learn. I get to be around greatness. I tell you guys, you better surround yourself with people who have, surround yourself with people who are same mind frame as you trying to get to their freedom and people who are already at their freedom. And, and I don't mean you gotta know them personally. Just get your gang of five. Go online and grab you a gang of five. People that are doing the right things to help people build wealth. I'm not talking about a gang of five of, of fake gurus who want you to send them $15,000, $2,000 to teach you something. No, I ain't talking about them fake gurus. I'm talking about real people out there online that are giving out free information via video and all you gotta do is grab nuggets and execute. Go grab you five of those people and start feeding yourself Every day. See, you should be feeding yourself every day mentally with financial food. 
You should be feeding your mind, your filter system, which is your brain. You should be feeding that filter system every single day with the proper financial food. A lot of us, we want to eat Twinkies. We want to fill our mind with Twinkies, right? Pop-Tarts, Snicker bars. We don't want no proper financial food. We want to go get this improper financial food, AKA fake gurus. Oh, send me $2,500 and I guarantee you, you'll get a 50% a return on your money in a week. Oh, open up this crypto account and send me $3,000 and I'm going to trade it for you and get you a 50, 60, 70% return on your money in a week. Oh, look at my fake Lambo. Look at my fake jet. Uh, look at my fake house. Look at, look how well I'm doing. Oh, send me $500 and I'm going to help you get your credit. I'm going to get your trade lines and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat the system for you and help you get better credit so you can go out and borrow more money to make people wealthy. Guys, it's the wrong food. That's the wrong financial food. You got to start finding yourself some healthy financial food to feed your filter system every day. Stop searching the internet for, 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 for jokes and giggles. Oh, all we want to do is go on and see a skit, see something funny, see somebody degrade somebody else, see people on there with no clothes on, half dressed, showing all their whatever to the world. That's what we want to do. That's where we want to spend our time. Yeah, we want to spend our time doing that kind of crap. Get in debates and fights over politics where none of the candidates don't know you, don't care nothing about you. But yet and still, we will fight tooth and nail for them. And these people don't care nothing about you other than your donation. That's all they care about. They don't care nothing else about you. The wrong financial food, guys. You have to fill your filter system with the right financial food. And then you take that nourishment and you act on it. You act on it. You build wealth. You get to your freedom. You control your time. You control your financial destiny. Or you can keep on taking in, eating the wrong financial food and you'll work for somebody for the rest of your life and you'll stay broke. That's your choice. You decide. You decide. You decide. You decide. But Know this, when you look in that mirror every morning, don't blame anybody but you. Don't blame the government. Don't blame your kindergarten teacher because she made you sit in the back and you never recovered from that, right? Don't blame her. Don't blame the little league coach who never put you in the game. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame your neighbor. Don't blame your best friend. Don't blame your brother or your sister. Blame you. Because you should be in control of your own life. You shouldn't let people pull your life strings. You should be pulling your life strings. So don't, don't, don't blame anybody else but you. I don't care what your background is. And again, that's for people who are able body, sound mind. I'm not talking about people who, who just were born that way or, 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 or for whatever reason got into something and mentally they're just not all there. I'm not talking about that person. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking about. So don't, oh, uh, what, what are you talking about? There are people who can't help it. No, I ain't talking about them people. See, there we go again. Let, let, let's deflect. See, we, 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 we don't want to look at us. We won't blame us. We, oh, 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 I can't believe he said that. There are people out there who, who can't help it. Come on, guys. I know that. I'm not talking about those people. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I'm, t I'm talking about y'all out there who take your hard-earned money and make other people wealthy. I'm talking about people out there that always want to get in somebody else's business instead of worrying about their own business. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about y'all always dropping comments with problems, no solutions though. Never a solution. Always a problem. <laughs> always complaining. Always making excuses. 
can't help yourself. How about drop a comment with a solution to something? How about that? How about that? Some of you OGs know how I get down in the comments. Sometimes I just don't even pay attention to them, but sometimes I will, I will get a little sarcastic every now and then if I'm feeling frisky, if I'm in a frisky mood. And I just laugh because it's funny. It's funny to me how people worry about all the wrong stuff. How about coming up with a solution for once instead of always coming up with a problem or, or, or an excuse? Never holding yourself accountable. How about that? How about hold yourself accountable? How about that? How about that? How about holding yourself accountable for once in your life and not blaming everybody else for your problems you created for yourself? Oh, I made all of these horrible decisions financially, but it ain't my fault. Nope, it's not my fault. I, I didn't have any financial literacy. No, it's not my fault. No one ever taught me that. No, it's not my, no, it is your fault. You're a grown person. You're grown. You're grown. That's the worst thing I, I hate to hear people always complaining about what happened to them in their past. Listen, everybody has something that's traumatic. And that's, that's unfortunate. But guys, we can't live in the past. We can't, we can't live our life in the present in the past. We got to learn from the past. We got to heal from the past. But ultimately, we got to live in the present and look forward to the future. So we can't just sit around and always live in the past. Get yourself in a position where you start reprogramming yourself. It's a lifelong process. You never fully reprogram yourself. All you can do is to start the process and every single day, do better. Every single day, chip away at it. Every single way, chip away at reprogramming yourself. Right? Every aspect of your life, but especially your financial life. Just reprogram yourself. Start living on less than what you make. Check one. First step in reprogramming my financial life is live on less than what I make. Step two in reprogramming my financial life is live on a plan. Put together a personal budget. You know how much income you got coming in. You got, know how much money you got going out. The goal is, is to have money left over at the end of the month so that you can, you can invest. Step three in reprogramming yourself financially is stay out of consumer debt. Stop buying new cars you can't afford to pay for. Stop buying used cars you can't afford to pay for. Buy something that can get you from A to B. That's it. Stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Stop buying things to make other people wealthy. Fourth thing you got to do in the reprogramming yourself reprogramming your filter system your brain is you got to save and invest got to get your three to six months emergency fund guys so if you hit a bump in the road guess what you're prepared you got some savings and then you got to invest you got to invest 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 month after month year after year and sometimes decade after decade took me two decades to get comfortable with my financial situations so that I could leave corporate America, six figure income earner. Took me 20 years. Now I didn't make six figures for 20 years. I didn't. My first 10, 12 years of banking, 13, my first 10, 12 years of banking, I didn't make six figures. I made a decent salary, but it wasn't six figures. I didn't get to six figures to probably, I don't know, around my, Halfway point, maybe 12, 13 years in the banking. But I didn't, I didn't let that stop me. When I was making $30,000 a year in banking, $30,000 a year, I was taking $150, $300 a month and then putting it in the stock market. When I was making $30,000 a year, I bought my first house. Not because I was going to live in that house for the rest of my life. No, I bought that house because I knew it was my first rental property. I said, I'm going to buy this house, but I'm going to live in it for two years, but it's a rental property. In two years, it's going to become a rental property. And then I'm going to move to the next house. And then two years from that, that one's going to become a rental property. And then I'm going to buy the third house. And guess what? That third one was going to become a rental property. See, I wasn't married to no house. 
when I was young and running hard and building my real estate book of business. I wasn't married to no house. The only reason I bought the house and lived in it was so I can get better financing terms. See, when it's your primary residence, you can get away with 5% down, 10% down. Live in the house for two years, dip, go buy another house, boom, put a tenant in that house that you got the low down payment on. That's how I got in these houses. And I had to put 20% down, right? Early on, first house I bought, FHA, 3.5% down. Boom, lived in it for two years, dipped. Second house I moved in, like 10% down. Why? Because it was my primary residence. Got the best interest rate possible because it was my primary residence. Two years later, moved out of that house, bought another one, primary residence, 10% down, boom, and just kept moving. Eventually, I started putting 20% down, but not early on because I didn't have 20% put down. I had no money. All I had was the equity in the house and a good job and decent credit. And that's all I needed to start building my real estate portfolio. So a lot of you guys out there who, oh, listen, man, if you want to buy real estate, buy it. Just buy it in the right location. Don't worry about what the prices are. If it's for, if it's for investment, what you do is, is you make sure the rental income will cover all your expenses. And if it's in the right location, it will increase in value over time. Just hold the property 5, 10, 15 years. That's all you got to do. Keep a tenant in it. Take care of your tenant. Right? Screen your tenants to make sure you get good tenants. Take care of them. And just wait till that sucker appreciate in value. That's what I did. And I, don't, I think you can do that today. People are doing it. While we're sitting back complaining about real estate prices, people are still doing what they do. Just go find you a, 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 a distressed property. Go in a good neighborhood. Find the worst house in that neighborhood as long as it doesn't have any structural damage. And you're good to go. TLC, boom. Instant equity. Put a tenant in it. Go to the next one. Now, if you ain't got no money and you ain't got no credit, step back. Get your credit right, get you some money right before you try to go do this. Because ain't nobody going to give you no loan with raggedy credit and no money. I don't care what these guys tell you on the internet. Ain't nobody going to give you no nothing. Not for no great neighborhood. Now, if you're out there scamming people and acting crazy, you may be able to get that. But not a legitimate real estate investor. Not a legitimate bank or finance company that's, that's trying to finance people who are legit. They're not going to do that kind of stuff. They're not going to lend you money if you don't have proven way to repay them. They're not going to lend you money if you have proven that you cannot take care of your credit obligations. Why would a bank give you money when you can't provide those two pieces of information to make them feel comfortable that you know what you're doing? Just use your brain, guys. No bank is going to give you money if you have demonstrated in the past, the recent past, that you can't take care of your credit and that you can't, you, don't, you can't keep a job. Why would I lend you two, three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars when you cannot prove you can keep a job or keep consistent on paying your bills on time? No one's gonna give you a loan for that. Now people will tell you they can get you loans, but be careful, be careful, be careful. Guys, hit that thumbs up if you're just tapping in the live. Hit that thumbs up. Please hit the thumbs up for me if you're just tapping in. Hit that thumbs up for me. It, 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 it's greatly appreciated. It helps the channel and it helps me. We can get YouTube to spread this content out to more folks so we can help more people get to their financial freedom. So, so we got a lot of people in there right now. Please, all of you guys, hit that thumbs up for me. I know we'll have a couple people that don't because they're in here hating, but that's okay. For y'all that appreciate the content, whether you agree with it or not, if you appreciate it, Please hit the thumbs up for me. Hit it if you just appreciate it. You ain't got to agree with everything. I respect that. I respect people who can, who can disagree with me and we can do it like adults. I'm cool with that. But if you appreciate the content, since you did take your time out of your day to tap in, tap that thumbs up for me. Hit that thumbs up for me. Please, please, please. I really, really would appreciate it because I like to get this content out to more people so that we can have help more people get to their financial freedom. That's the goal. We want to help more people get to their financial freedom. So please do that for me. Hit that thumbs up. Also, I want you to consider sharing this video because this will turn into a video once I end the live stream. It will turn into a video. So please, if you don't mind, if you know somebody out there who's trying to eat the right financial food for their, uh, their, their filter system. They're trying to get the right financial food, healthy financial food,
for their filter system so they can start that reprogramming process. Turn them my way. Turn them onto the channel. Turn them onto this video. Just send them the link. Send them the link and say, hey, I don't know about this guy. I like him. He, he's okay. I agree with he, what he says. Some things I don't agree with, but listen to him and give me your opinion on what you think about this guy. That's what I'm going to ask you to do. Send this to somebody in your sphere, your network, your family, your, 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 your friendship groups, your relationship groups, co-worker. Send this to him and say, hey, check this guy out and give me your opinion on him. I really would appreciate that. Sharing, sharing, thumbs up, thumbs up. I appreciate it. That, that, that's my motivation, guys. For, for, for getting out here every single day and trying to give you the right financial food that I believe can help you get to your financial freedom. That's how you repay me, by hitting that thumbs up button and sharing the content. That's all the payment I need from you. If you're serious about building wealth and using paper assets to do it, you're gonna need a brokerage account. Weeble, down in the description box, there's a link for Weeble. Click on that Weeble link. Open up your new Weeble brokerage account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. And guess what else I'm going to do? If you DM me on Instagram and say, hey, Richard, I opened up that Weeble account. I, I put a few bucks in because you got to fund it, guys, if you want to get up to the 12 free stock. They're not going to give you any free stock if you don't fund it. But you fund it with whatever you are comfortable funding it with, whatever your budget will allow. You fund the account. And you send me that DM at richardfain 28 on Instagram and tell me you did that. I'm going to send you a Weeble tutorial video that I did that will walk you through the basic steps to start using the app to start buying your favorite individual stocks and or ETFs. I'm going to send you that without you having to do anything other than let me know you opened the account and you funded it. So send me a DM on Instagram at richardfain 28 Again, you need a brokerage account if you're going to trade paper assets, if you're going to invest in paper assets. You need a brokerage account. And I use Weeble every day, right, to transact business. So that's the reason I'm offering it to you. Jump on that if you want to. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And when I say never stop believing in yourself, never stop believing in yourself, guys. Never, 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 never stop believing in yourself. And I'll catch you on the next live or I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.